Welcome to the Engineerable channel. Today I'm going to be showing how to install this Catch a Raindrop brand rainwater harvesting system for your gutters. So this is uh, the device that allows you to connect your rain barrel to your gutter. So this goes on the inside of the gutter and this is going to be visible on the outside of the gutter here. So the first thing you think when you see this is, um, isn't most of the water just going to flow on the inside of this and pass through? Well, it turns out that's not how it works because water has surface tension so it doesn't just free fall in your gutter, it actually sticks to the sides of the gutter. So that's what this does is this picks up all the water running down the side of your gutter, it goes into this space in between here and it flows out of this outlet which has a hose connection on it and then when your rain barrel is full Ideally, it backs up to here, and then the water will just overflow and go down the gutter as it normally would. So it's that simple, and this is designed to keep out leaves and debris from getting in there, although I, I wouldn't be surprised that after a while there's some debris that's going to get in there. But you should also combine this with a good gutter guard system that will keep the leaves and debris out of your gutter in the first place. This is a clip that's going to go down uh, lower on the spout after you've cut it comes with a cap so you can just cap it off if you're not using a rain barrel yet. The other tools you're going to need are a level and you're going to use this to determine the height at which you're going to cut the gutter to install the rain collector. You're going to need a screwdriver with a Phillips head for this one little tiny screw that comes here to attach the clip for the bottom of the gutter. You need a square of some sort to help you draw a line that's perpendicular across the face of the gutter for cutting. And you're going to need a saw, in this case the simplest, a hacksaw, to cut through your gutter. You can also use a powered saw, but uh, this is an aluminum gutter and I'm worried if I use my sawzall I'm just going to wreck the aluminum. So I'm going to do it by hand with the hacksaw. And last, you're going to need a marker of some sort. Here I'm going to use my marksmith. And I'm going to use that to mark the lines in the gutter where to cut. This is what the rain collection barrel looks like so far that we've set up next to the house. So we built a stand here to set it up on and level it out. And the stand is made of recycled plastic landscaping timbers there. And then we have some old concrete blocks underneath to support the load. And it's on a hillside, so so we've, we've uh, tried to not affect the hillside too much so water can still easily flow downhill underneath and not pool. So that's why it's set up like this. Um, we've passed the gutter underneath. Hopefully this, uh, the, the dirt can support it and it won't crush that, that, uh, that pipe too much. Um, we also have some drainage coming from behind the house that needs to be um, changed a little bit here. We need to move this. Uh, we need to work on this drainage here. But so far this is our setup and here we have the downspout for the gutter. There's already a, a break here which I'm hoping I can, I can cut right there and use it so make that, um, make that look nicer too. I don't know if it's the right height yet. We're also going to enclose this in some black fabric, outdoor fabric, and probably put some trellis around it so it looks nice. The way it's shown here to do it in this diagram is a little bit confusing because there's no dimensions here. But what I can figure out that they're saying here is that you first use a level to measure where the top of your barrel is relative to the gutter downspout. Then you measure where the entrance to your rain barrel is relative to the downspout. And then you make a mark halfway between those two and that's where you make your cut. So that makes the exit from the downspout higher than the entrance to the rain barrel, but the water will only ever fill up to this height and it won't overflow your rain barrel. Here we've taken a level and lined it up with the top of our rain barrel, and I'm going to make a little mark on the gutter to show where the top lines up with the, with the gutter downspout. So I'm just going to make a mark here. So this is my, so I know that this is the top of my rain barrel. So in this case here, if this is the line that's the top of our rain barrel and you put your, uh, your opening of the rain catcher right here, then when the rain barrel will be filled up, 
it would actually start overflowing the rain barrel because this is at the same height or maybe a little bit higher. If you want it to stop when it's filled up, you're gonna have to lower it down below this mark. Something probably about here where it's going to fill up to the top of the rain barrel and stop because the water is going to back up and it's not going to allow any more water to flow. Now if you put it too low, if you put it down here, if I were to install this device down here, as you can see this is level right here, it's only going to ever fill up the rain barrel to the bottom of that stick there. So that's, that's as high as the rain barrel is ever going to fill up. So if you want the rain barrel to fill all the way up, you need to move this up until it's level with the position where you want it to fill up on the rain barrel. Then the rain barrel is only ever going to fill up as high as this mark is. My gutter was damaged here at some point, so this is a good place to cut it. This is the top level of my rain barrel, so this is a little bit higher to cut than, than where you should cut it if you don't want your rain barrel overflowing. Fortunately, mine is a tank, so it's capped. So I don't have to worry about it overflowing. But if you have an open top rain barrel, then, then you would want to cut it down below this height. So I'm going to make a mark here, across here where I'm going to cut. And a mark on the side, so it allows me to line up my saw. And now I'm going to cut out this section of the hacksaw. more difficult than it seems because it's grabby. <laughs> that, was a, that was much more of a pain than I expected. And I'm actually going to shorten this a little bit. I'm going to cut out the bad part here and shorten this because I want to raise, I want to raise the bottom anyways. Plus, one thing to take note about this is that it adds a little bit of height to your gutter length because in the bottom the gutter goes all the way inside until it stops against the plastic here but the top it looks like there's a step in here which might stop your gutter from going down lower because you'd also don't want it to block off this hole here so I measured that at about 40 millimeters or close to a little bit one and a half inches. So that's going to, your gutter is going to be lengthened by that, that amount. So I'm going to cut out a little section anyways. One of the tricky parts is after you've cut the downspout is getting it to fit in here. It's a tight fit and I can get one side in and then kind of work my way around. But it's going to be, it's going to be tricky because any little bend or anything in the downspout makes it difficult to get it all the way around. Uh, almost there. It's not going in. I'll have to have to bend this a little bit. Maybe it's, uh, there we go. There we go. Okay, so that's in. The bottom piece is in. Now the top piece. So we got that in there. Now we've got to fit this top piece in here. I probably need to get a pair of pliers a little bit to bend this top piece into shape. And I need to remove this strap from the wall here first so I can pull it away from the wall a little bit. These Nipex plier wrenches with the flat jaws are really good for bending sheet metal small bends and sheet metal to get it into the shape that you want it. This was all bent up before and um, kind of straightening it up and bending it in the shape that I need to be able to fit into that piece. I think that might actually work. Bend this in a little bit here. Oh, 
Okay, that's about as far as it should go. One thing I forgot to do first is to put the clip on. This clip needs to be attached about 12 inches below down here. So now this clip can grab the gutter and hey, it actually clips right in there perfectly. Those ridges on the clip match the ridges on the gutter. Hey, it looks good. Just need to put the nails back in on the strap here. I had to remove earlier and hook up the hose. So here I'm using an old washer hose as a connector. It's gonna go between this downspout connector. I'm just going to use this connector that I have already and drill a hole in here that that's gonna press into. Um, you could get fancier with it, but this will be good enough for this setup here. To drill into this tank, it's the HGP tank. I'm gonna use a, it's not really, it's not a step bit. It's just like a angled bit. It's just gonna allow me to, to make the hole bigger until it's the perfect fit for this connector. This is something I had. This is a quick disconnect connector piece and should work fine for this. So I can always add something better later. I'm gonna make the hole down here a little bit um, where it's a flatter section of the tank. I'm gonna check the size, it's not big enough yet. Oops, it's probably gonna be right on or too big. There we go, perfect fit. So I used some stretchy silicone tape to wrap around the back to make a seal against the tank. And uh, it looks like it's gonna be a good seal now. And now I'm gonna connect my hose coming off of the gutter downspout into here. And it should be good. All set. I'm gonna leave my cap open a little bit, just like this, so it allows air to pass through and it won't make a tight seal so the air can escape as the tank is filling up with water. And this is what we've got so far for today. I've wrapped it with some roofing underlayment to create a black surface. 